Hello! In this video, we're going to be creating our very own Fruit Ninja game in Scratch, as you see on the screen. Of course, our game isn't going to be this complex, but we're going to cover the basics of the game, and, well, yeah. Uh, so, I hope you're excited for this video, and let's get started. Alright, to get started, um, I've just started off with these sprites. I have a bomb sprite, and I have a fruit sprite. Um, let me just make sure the canvas is clean. Um, the bomb sprite is just these two sprites um, that I've hand drawn. Um, you can make your own bomb sprite. And then these fruit sprites, sprites, I have a watermelon, I have a coconut, and I have an apple. You can really use whatever fruits you want, and you really only need one fruit. Um, I just have this many fruits for variety. Um, so yeah, let's get started. You can import your own or draw your own as I have. Okay. Um, and I'll just, I'll just name these, uh, appropriately. Okay. So, to start, um, obviously Fruit Ninja is, um, a pretty basic game, and we're gonna make it, um, pretty basically today. Um, but I'm gonna give you, um, a lot of things that you could do better, um, after you watch this video, and maybe you end up doing those things. So, let's just start um, with one flag clicked, and we just want to test out our, our motion. So, we're going to say glide one seconds to zero, zero, and then glide back one second to uh, zero, negative 190. So, what the glide block does is it basically moves um, the sprite, but it does it in a smooth way. So, as we see here, It'll go up and it'll go down, and it's it is really smooth. Um, so this is what we'll be using. Obviously, this isn't perfect. As you can see, we come to a complete stop, and then we come back down. If you want to see how to make this really more smooth and seamless, then check out um, my uh, some other videos where we cover um, these ver vertical speed. Okay, now that we have this out of the way. Um, we need to be creating clones, right? Because we want multiple fruits to be on the screen at the same time. So when flag clicked, and let's say forever, wait one second, and then create clone of myself. Okay, great. Now we can say when I start as a clone, glide one second to X00 and glide back. So we want to make sure we start at this position. So um, let's try this out now. So every one second we should have a clone going. And yeah, um, it looks pretty good. Um, but you can see it one second makes it just look too robotic. Um, you could say. So instead of waiting one second, let's just rate a random time from one to two or let's say wait a random time from 100 to 200 and what we'll do is we'll divide this by 100 so that way we can have decimal options as well okay so now that we do this we can see it is somewhat random There we go. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to randomize the X position of our fruits. So, to do this, we can say go to X, pick random, and we'll say what can our X values range from? They can go from about negative 200 to positive 200. So pick random negative 200 to positive 200. And so instead of gliding uh, to x0, we can just say glide to x position. So if we try this out, and it looks like there's a slight problem. And uh, that's just because um, I've put this pick random in the wrong spot. So now we try this out. Yeah, looks great. 
Okay. So now let's randomize um what costume the the um, the uh, fruits are. So let's say switch costume to and um instead of uh, I did just rename these costumes, but instead of this, let's just do one, two, three. And the reason we do this is because now we can just say pick random one through three. So now we try this. Okay. And I think uh, we might be waiting a bit too long. So let's say we'll range it from 50 to 150. Try that out. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, so now um, let's maybe randomize the height of um, how, basically how far we go as well. So we always want to start at negative 190 and go to negative 190, but our Y, let's say it's a range from zero all the way up to maybe 140. So this way, yeah, there we go. Fruit's going all over the place. Okay, next uh, we want to hide our original costume. And we want to show the clones. And once we've done all this, we want to delete the clone so there's no lag and we no longer see it once it's done with all its motion. Okay. Yep. And it's looking great. Maybe this is just a tad too fast. So let's change this 50 to maybe 70. And yeah, um, it seems to be going pretty good. So we can just get this uh, when this right click block and this will apply to clones as well and we can just say repeat 10 maybe change size or let's say set size to 70 percent so let's, let's try this out Oh, and I think the problem is we've we've already started at 50. So let's say um, instead of the set size, let's change size by negative 10. Oh, yeah, there we go. And then we can simply um, delete the clone. Okay, yeah, and that works pretty good. Uh, now we just want a point system. Okay, now we just want a point system. So let's go to variables and create our first variable and let's just call it score. And so when this happens, we just want to change our score by one. Okay, and let's say if we ever get to this point, we need to delete the clone here. We can change score by negative one. Okay, and at the very start of the game, we wanna set our score to zero. And there you have it. Those are the fundamental basics of Fruit Ninja right here. And let's just make score visible so we can see where we're at. We're at five. Oh, I just lost a point. Oh, I'm losing a lot. Yeah. So there are so many more things you could do with this game, such as a splat effect, a uh, mouse trail, um, having power-ups. Um, we haven't worked with this bomb sprite yet, but you could have it so that when you click the bomb sprite, um, it explodes, and that might be something we cover in a future video. Um, but for now, that's it. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, um, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.